wave me on, except I have a stop sign and he doesn't. Why do people do that? Well, hey y'all, welcome back to Doug's Cars. Sitting in my Range Rover today because I have not brought enough Range Rover content to loyal Range Rover viewers and everybody else. So here we go. It's the 4th of July here in the States. Happy 4th if you celebrate it. If not, sorry, British people. Um, but uh, I'm gonna work on my British car just to make up for that. Last 4th of July, I actually changed the oil in this vehicle for the first time. It was still sitting on the lot at sports car workshops because it wasn't drivable. It still was on the, the collapsed air suspension. And so you know, we could move it around a lot, but it was not roadworthy at all. That was a very hot day. I did it out in the sun. It's obviously a, a repair shop. There are no trees for shade. And it was just misery trying to do this. Today, it'll be a lot easier. The car is up high. I don't even really need ramps, but I'm gonna put it on ramps because my driveway is sloped and this way I'll get it nice and even. And yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see. It's been one year since the oil's been in the car. So I'm doing it based on age, not mileage. I've driven this probably about a thousand miles. I'm not exactly certain. The odometer does work, but I don't remember what it was at, at the time. And I know it was a good 500 mile round trip to go to do the MIR event last October in Western Virginia. And I have driven this to the Outer Banks as well, which is about, I think 150 miles each way, plus just around town from time to time. I mean, I don't drive this very often because I still have to fix the exhaust leak and it's loud. The driver's side power window doesn't work and the air conditioning doesn't work. So in the summer, this is pretty much useless as a car. Uh, it's just, I'm not gonna drive around in 95 degree heat with no air conditioning or no functioning driver's side window. These are of course more things to work about. But today, the name of the day is oil change. And so I wanna get that done. I'm just gonna bring that quick video to you so that you can see I'm still working on this and, and bringing Range Rover content because uh, I want to. And I wanna keep making this thing better because it deserves to live after sitting in a field for 12 years. All right, let's get this thing started. Moved over under the driveway and up on some ramps and uh, see if I can break off that drain plug. Last year, didn't wanna come out at all. And it was like a, it's like a one and a quarter inch drain plug. All right, let's get this thing going. runs I think yep she runs well I didn't get started in time and uh, I just I just missed the shade I mean this creates kind of its own shade but it's up on the ramps get up a drain plug thankfully last year past dog bought an oil filter that has <laughs> something you can put a wrench on to get it off easily thankfully current dog or it was another past dog because I got it two days ago bought the same filter not just because it's a K&N I don't care about that, but it's got that easy off nut on the end of it. And uh, yeah, let's hope and see that the um, drain plug comes out just as easily. All right, time to change into grubby clothes and get started. I don't think there's anything else new under the hood here. I did exchange out the coil and that's made a wonderful difference in the idling and running of this vehicle. It really has. It, it had a random misfire. Sometimes you'd be driving along like on the highway going 60 miles an hour and just cut out and come right back in. That made it so much better. It idles so much better. Um, looking underneath, now I had, of course, a power steering blowout and that's obviously documented here um, with all the power steering fluid, but it looks like it's still leaking. Maybe on a hose down here. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, the, the cats and all look fine. Um, the exhaust, of course, is pretty much all new, other than the manifolds, which are what the problem is. Uh, obviously, I replaced the shocks and springs, or I had them replaced. Um, so yeah, uh, Range Rover experts, see anything else wrong down here, let me know. Um, well, there's a giant daddy long legs right there. Um, which hopefully is showing up on the camera because the screen turned off and I can't see it. So yeah, I'm gonna crack off that, get this out. I've got a giant tub here to catch the off because those two things are pretty far apart and it's difficult to catch in my other catch can. And uh, I'm putting this off way too long. <laughs> it's so hot out, y'all. <laughs> I so wanted to do this tomorrow, but it's the one year anniversary. I have to do it on the one year anniversary. It's just, it's how I'm wired. <laughs> That's why you come to Doug's cars, right? 
my grandfather's giant crescent wrench. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Might have to back that off just a hair here. Oop, wrong way. Yeah, this is going to take an hour. <laughs> Actually, I'll probably use a smaller one on that. Yeah, yeah. Let me get a smaller one. That's more like it. There we go. Oh, the extra couple bucks for this filter <laughs> makes it worth it every single freaking time. Hey, let's get some of that black gold out. Mmm. Doesn't look too bad. I mean, other than just, you know, it's used oil with a thousand miles on it and an engine with 205,000 miles on it that got its first oil change in over 12 years last year. <laughs> Smells like oil. Yeah, I think, I think we'll be okay. I think it'll enjoy this new oil. Maybe I should get this stuff sent off to like Blackstone Labs and see if there's anything wrong with it. I think I have one of those containers somewhere. If not, I know Mike has them at the, at the shop and I can probably grab one from him. That might be interesting to see. The first oil change after oil had sat in an engine for 11 years. What could possibly be in the fresh oil after a year and a thousand miles? Hmm. So I did just notice something. Um, my oxygen sensors are not actually installed in. I can see a bong on the side there, but they didn't install them in when I had the new um, cats put on. The other side too. Let's see if I can get it on the camera here for you. Um, uh, yeah, it's just hanging down up there. And um, the bunk fort's on the top over there. Why Why did they go to the effort to install all those downpipes and the cats and not plug my oxygen sensors back in? <laughs> all right, I'll take care of that as soon as I'm done with the oil. One thing at a time. So here's the other problem with getting the oil changed in this. You, you can't get a socket in here because, because yeah, exhaust. And uh, yeah, all right, I broke it loose. Um, of course, there's all this stuff underneath it, too. All right, good. It's spinning by hand now. Fantastic. Get this. Oh, yeah. Success. If you watched the video from last year, Mike had to get this off. We couldn't. It was on so tight. It had been on so long. Uh, mm, oil. Oil that doesn't appear to have any metal flakes in it. Which is really good. Because I'd like to keep this thing running for a long time to come. But yeah, so I'm going to link to that video up there. And um, check it out. Because not only am I even greasier and nastier than I am right now. And I'm wearing the same hat. But um, yeah, that was an absolute nightmare to get off. And I mean, it was it was on just right. Use the little one. Because the big crescent wrench, which by the way... This thing is massive. <laughs> My grandfather was a machinist in the coal mines and that was one of his tools and I got it uh, after he unfortunately passed away, but such is life, these things happen. It was too big to fit on there and, and move. Quiet you, that sounds disgusting. Anyway, I used my shorter, newer crescent wrench and uh, got it right off. Let's get this drained, throw that back on, throw the filter on, get the oil in this fired up and see how she runs. Probably, probably about the same. Well, now the fun starts, got my funnel, got oil. The thing is, this takes uh, liters of oil. 6.25 is what I saw. Well, we can't buy oil in liters because it comes in quarts, which are almost the same, but not quite. So I just did the conversion at 6.6, .6, so I've got seven. I'll put six in, start it, blah, 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 put a little bit more in just to make sure, you know, everything's hunky-dory under there. Uh, it's funny that they're like almost the same, but not quite. And of course, you, there's no such thing as a liter of oil here. It's, it's not, a, not something you can buy. Mm. New filter, new oil. Oh, yeah, I made that way too big for the... Let's see. And, and just crank it over. A little tiny bit because there's no reason to have this thing on with freaking impact wrench. That feels good. New parts. That's always always fun. All right, drain plugs on there nice and tight. Put in some uh, honey gold. 
if I'm gonna be here for a while. I'm still on the first quart. Yeah, I know this is not the right way to pour it, but I'm pouring one-handed so I can hold the camera on the other hand. Yeah, almost got six quarts in it. Like I said, I'm gonna put six in, run around the block, check the oil level, and then top up when necessary, if necessary. I think that sounds like a good plan. Got y'all mounted up here so you can look at my ugly sweaty mug while I drive this around the block. Uh, first things first, fire up. Okay, okay, good, good. Oil lights on, let's see, it went off, excellent. All right, I gotta back this up, the jack stands. Well, we're going anywhere. Safety first. Safety third sometimes works too. Hey, at least since the driver's side window isn't working, don't have to worry about any wind noise ruining the audio quality. All right. Don't usually drive down the driveway. I usually back down it. This is certainly feels different. Just an oil change. I'm not going to drive any different. Hopefully, it doesn't explode. Technically, I have a vehicle with twice as many miles on it as this one. Almost exactly twice as many miles. So, if that one's okay, this one should be totally fine. Put a little traffic to pass here. Okay. Wave me on, except I have a stop sign and he doesn't. Why do people do that? Why? You don't have a stop sign. Don't stop. Just drive. Sorry, didn't mean to go off on a Dennis Miller rant here, but pet peeve, why? You have a stop sign? I mean, I have a stop sign and you don't. Now I've got another stop sign. And now that, that guy's now behind me. Oh, left the rear window open. Hey, flow through ventilation. Nothing wrong with that. So I say this is a successful 4th of July. It's a hot one, as you can probably tell. But one year to the day, I had to do it wanted to make a video it's a Saturday I like putting videos out on the weekend because I have a day job this is not it not yet anyway if you want to make this my day job I will wholeheartedly support you as often as possible by bringing videos as often as possible if you want to make this my day job make sure you like you share you subscribe you comment you tell your friends you get them to subscribe and I can keep bringing more of this content to you which is what I want to do so please do those things Thanks y'all so much for watching. Have a great holiday if it is a holiday that you choose to participate in. And I do by working on British cars. And thanks for watching Doug's Cars. See y'all soon.